Hello everybody, it's Jill Tile from Jilly Mac Designs here and today I'm investigating the stitch power of this machine. It's the Janome Horizon Memory Craft 9480 QC Professional to give it its full title. Um, and uh, I've been working on some samples. And I thought instead of working them on my own, I'd show you what I was doing. We'll also just have a quick rethread of the machine and I'll, we'll talk a little bit about the foot pedal as well, because all of those are part of the experience of actually harnessing the stitch power of the machine. So let's get started. So my method of investigating the stitch power has been to um, test out some of the stitches on some denim. I like working with denim because it gives me some structure. And what I've been doing is I have been programming the machine to write the number of the stitch so that I know which stitch it is, and then um, do a set number of um, uh, elements of that stitch or repeats of that stitch, and then do a lock stitch. Okay, so I'm really only scratching the surface of the machine, but I wanted to at least um, start to look at the size and the variety of stitches. What I've done is I've changed colour. So the top ones are applique. And then we've got some cross stitches. Then we've got some heirloom stitches. Then we've got some quilting stitches. And then we've got some quilting style stitches down here. And I'm onto satin stitches over there. And then you and I are going to be looking at some decorative stitches and possibly long stitches, possible animal, possible lifestyle. We'll have a good look at what's there as well. So I'm not doing every stitch, much as I would like to sit here and do every stitch because they're all absolutely brilliant. Um, I'm just picking a few so that I get a feel for the machine and a feel for how to use it. So I thought you might enjoy doing it with me. So let's start off by, I'm gonna re-thread because I'm gonna move on to the decorative stitches and we'll have a look at the decorative stitches once I've re-threaded. Right, we're going to thread up with some pink. So, thread's coming down underneath. There we go. Spool cap on. And then, I'm just going to put it through. It goes through a couple of guides up on the top, down, up, through the take up lever, give it a bit of a tug. Comes down here through this guide, through the guide above the needle. Go above the needle, through the guide above the needle. Oh dear. Through the guide, oh it does go above the needle. Then through up to seven. Up here. And then around and just pull it. So you just pull it off the side of the um, cutter. And then we just push this down and it threads it. There we go, we're all threaded and ready to go. And uh, Frankie's joined us. So I'm midway through my sample piece and I'm onto the decorative stitches. So now I decide which decorative stitches I'm going to do. And I think I'll do seven and 15. I think I'll do 18. And what else do you think? 29. Oh, 39 looks like a kite. I'll do that. Just reminds me of flying kites with the kids. Oh, and I'll do 49 as well because 49 I've seen in other in my other machines and it's a great stitch. It looks very simple, but it's a great stitch. So let's have a look at how I would uh, program those. So here's my home screen. First thing I want to do is I want the foot to raise up um, when I finish stitching. And as soon as I put my foot on the foot pedal, I want the presser foot to go down. So that's just this foot up foot down button here. Right, so I want to do D7. So I'm going to write D7 because I want to be able to remember which stitch it is. So I've gone on to the monogramming mode. I'm just put a D in and then I want to find the numbers. Move along. Next page, seven. Then go back a page because I want to put a space in. And then I want to put my pattern in D7. So decorative is on the next page. And seven here. It says one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I put ten iterations of the pattern in and then a lock stitch. Okay, so let's just stitch that all out. All I'm gonna do is press the press of press put my foot on the um uh, pedal now and we're just gonna see exactly what happens. Okay, so I'm all lined up and off we go.
okay and then I can and that's my d7 stitched out so you see I've got d7 and I've got it stitched so let's go on to the next one put that pattern in the bin and then I'm going to do now I want to do d15 was my next one d next page 15 then back to that page so I can put a space and then onto my decorative stitches. And I want to find 15. There's 15. Oh, it's a big one, one. So let's do, um, how many of those? Let's do eight of those. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Lock stitch. Now, as I'm stitching out, um, I will show you the beginning of this stitching from this panel. So you see what you can see from there as well because it's quite interesting because you can see it moving onto the stitches. So can you see it's turned blue for the D, now the one. Okay, now we're onto the actual pattern and it will cycle through that pattern allowing you can, to see exactly where it is. So although it doesn't look like it's changing as I move through the pattern, it moving before but it was moving it was just that it was moving and the same thing was appearing underneath so as we get to the end now this time instead of um, uh, um, finishing with pressing the um, the cutter at the top I'm just going to press the cutter on my foot pedal here So I'm going to show you the foot pedal next. So there's D15 and you saw it happening on the um, on the screen as well. So it's so easy to do. Let's have a quick look at the foot pedal before we do any more. So here's the foot pedal. You don't normally see it on my desk. So this is my larger foot pedal, really comfy to use, very easy. And then this smaller pedal to the right is actually a cutoff button. So you know, like the little scissor button. So I can just move my foot to the right and press. I don't even have to lift my hands and it cuts the thread. It's so convenient, very easy to use, uh, very intuitive once you get the handle of it. I found it a lot easier. I never really 100% have got on with the knee lift. I do use it from time to time, but it's something I haven't, I don't use regularly, whereas this is very intuitive. I use it all the time. So when I'm doing my normal sewing, I wouldn't need to program, you know, the the letter in and then the number of iterations, I can just select the stitch and go and it will just carry on and carry on. But I thought it'd be useful for you to see how to do or how I'm doing my little um, stitch sampler. So I'll just stop and show you this one. This is the, um, you know, that triangle stitch I was telling you about. I think it's such a nice stitch. It uses, um, I'm using quite fine thread and it just looks great. So you can see all these stitches. I mean, I'm just testing out just a few here. I mean, they look amazing. I'll tidy up all these ends in a second. I'll carry on and I'm going to do the botanicals now section. So... I'll stitch out some of those and show you, and then maybe we'll do a few animals. Okay, I think I've got my new favourite. Every time I do it, I have a new favourite stitch. Look at that leaf. Isn't that cool? Another leaf. And then here, little toadstools. Okay, so now I'm gonna move on to, I think I'll miss the long stitches because I wanna show you some animals. So let's have a look at that. Look at that brilliance. So we've got um, an elephant. Let's see if we can get that a bit closer. An elephant, a cat. Can you see the cat? 
a sheep and uh, an owl, elephant, cat, sheep, owl. So cool. And the number of stitches, I mean, I'm just, you know, just really skimming the surface. I'm just picking a few, as you can see. And they're just beautiful. And I can think as I'm print, as I'm, uh, as I'm stitching them out, I'm thinking about ways in which I can use them. And there's so many things I want to try. We often don't harness the stitch power properly. This one was actually a combination of stitches. So it was, it was um, a triangle pointing to the left, a triangle pointing to the right, and then a diamond triangle. So you can see I've sort of combined them to see what would happen. And I've written that there. So I've written S12, 13 and 15. Um, satin stitches. Let's have a look at the ones I did yesterday. So we've got some applique stitches here. And this is a really good way to just to look at your applique stitches because even though I always promise myself I'll test them out beforehand, I normally just look and, and get on with it. So I can see here the difference between a very small stitch and then a one with um, larger gaps. It's actually got two stitches in between. So one stitch in between, two stitches in between. And this has two stitches in between. And then it has almost like a two part um, downward um, downward uh, stitch. So, you know, um, in a zigzag, we have a normal zigzag and we have like a three part zigzag. Well, this is like a two part blanket stitch. Really cool. Then we've got our inverted, just a little, almost like a satin stitch you could use, inverted blanket stitch. And this is a blanket stitch that's like a scribble, but it's it's top justified. So the top is flat, whereas on this one, it's not justified. Then we've got the lovely cross stitch patterns. Let me show you those lovely cross stitch, cross stitch and heirloom patterns are just so classic and they're just fab. So I've done cross stitch, just a few. How many cross stitch patterns are there? There are 12 and I've done three. So that's only a quarter of them. Heirloom, I've done four and there's 28 heirloom stitches. So you can see I've only just touched the surface. Look at these. So this looks great. This is top justified again. I'll definitely use that one. This one looks fab because this is like... Um, almost like musical notes or like little baubles, um, uh, bobbles, you know, on the edge of a of a cushion or edge of a curtain. They just look really cool. I love a wiggle and that's another wiggle. Snowflakes. This is almost like palm trees, I think. Bricks. I don't know what you would call that. But, oh, it's like bunting, isn't it? Flowery bunting. Um, not sure what I call that, but it's lovely. Oh, these are like little teardrops on the side. Another one that's, it's actually, this is, this would be brilliant as grass. I don't know whether you can see that. Um, so these are the quilt style stitches down here. So lots of different, these little hearts are very topical. Hearts, everybody loves hearts all the time. Um, this one's a really nice one actually. A bit different, isn't it? Um, this one's a little bit different as well. Some of these are very new. I haven't seen them on, on different machines. Absolutely brilliant. So I'm going to carry on. I'm really enjoying because as I'm doing it, I'm thinking, how can I use this stitch? So, um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this.